Robin Gregory here again with another in my series, A Tenor Sang. Among my most played 78s is a song from a little-known opera by the French composer Adolphe Adam called The Postillion from Longjumeau. The last time I was there, Longjumeau was a traffic jam not too far from Paris, but this opera is set in less crowded times. It tells the story of a horseman who's discovered to be a superb singer, a tenor, of course, and in such a role the actual singer must impress the audience. This 1936 performance includes one of the most thrilling top Ds ever recorded. It's sung in German. The orchestra is the Berlin State Opera. <laughs> Glaubte mir, dass ich hier nichts erwischte. Jeder Mann hier weiß ja davon. Hörte man nur sein Horn ertönen, freute sich jede Tierin von. Selbst auf das Herz der Sprützen schönen, stürmte der Lasse mit ihm vor. Oh, so schön und froh. was a Danish tenor whose whole career was surrounded by controversy and an air of mystery. The first mystery is his real name. My three main dictionaries all disagree, so I shall stick to the name by which he became famous, Helga Rosewinger. He was born in Copenhagen in 1897 and originally studied for a scientific career in chemistry. Exactly how he turned to music is also a bit of a mystery. The sleeve notes to one compact disc say he was self-taught and that he married a trained singer. Another CD refers to his having studied singing while still planning on a scientific career. Whatever the truth of the matter, as early as 1921, when he was 23 or 4, he made his operatic debut at the Neustrelitz Opera House in northern Germany. There, his glittering career began in the demanding role of Don Jose in Bizet's Carmen. Here's his 1938 recording of The Flower Song, where Jose tells Carmen how the flower she kept his love alive in his prison cell. She
Helga Roswinger with the flower song from Carmen. Not subtle singing, perhaps, and a belted top note where Bizet asks for a quiet one, but the voice of a real man. From 1929 onwards, Roswinger became a stalwart member of the Berlin State Opera. To judge from the actual sound of his voice, one might have expected him to sing Wagner, but it was in Mozart, Puccini and Verdi that he was most famed. He appeared at Salzburg as Tamino in the Magic Flute, where the conductor was the legendary Toscanini. But in my view, none of his Mozart recordings show him at their best, so I shan't play any. Instead, let's hear him in Tosca, where his ringing metallic quality catches well the heroic character of Cavaradossi as he paints his picture of the Madonna and contrasts the colour of her eyes with those of his beloved Tosca.
strange harmony of contrasts from Act One of Tosca. At the Berlin State Opera, Rosewenger soon became established as the tenor in German language performances of Verdi's operas. He made many exciting recordings of the best-known arias, most of them displaying his strong baritonal quality and his huge ringing top notes. But sometimes he sprang a real surprise. I'm sure most of you know the difficult aria which comes right at the start of Aida. The poor tenor has to walk on and sing this punishing song before he's fully warmed up. Radames is captain of the guard in ancient Egypt, and he expresses his twin hopes that he may be chosen to lead the Egyptian armies against the Ethiopians, and that he may win the hand of Aida, a beautiful Ethiopian slave girl. In this aria, therefore, the tenor must display both strength and tenderness. It ends on a high note which Verdi marks to be sung very quietly. Almost every tenor thinks he knows better than Verdi, and if I were a betting man, I'd have put my shirt on Rosewinger, bellowing it out with the best of them. But just listen to this. Helga Roswinger, aged 43, giving us exactly what Verdi wrote in Celeste Aida. Those of you with a mathematical turn of mind will perhaps have worked out that that Berlin recording was made in 1940. What you may ask was a Dane doing in Berlin then? Well, that really did prove to be a pretty big question in Helga Roswinger's career. For not only did he stay in Berlin during the Allied bombing, he also gave every indication of being a supporter of the German position in the war. When the Opera House closed, he continued to give concerts. 
even sang at the wedding of Reich Marshal Goering, later to be tried as a Nazi war criminal. It's hardly surprising, therefore, that when the Russians occupied Berlin, he was arrested as a suspected collaborator, spending several months at an internment camp near Moscow. On his release, his mother country, Denmark, refused him entry, and he went to Sweden, which had been neutral during the war. By now, Rosewinger was nearly 50, and many a singer would have called it a day. But he was made of strong, if somewhat misguided, stuff, and he set off in a primitive boat for Venezuela with some Baltic refugees. When he reached the Canary Islands, however, he received an invitation to go to Basel in Switzerland to sing with the marvellous young soprano Lisa Della Casa. I well remember owning an early Decca LP of them both in Le Haas operetta Der Tsarevich with the Tonhalle Orchestra of Zurich. So clearly he was well accepted in Switzerland. And from that period, here's a 78 he made of You Are My Heart's Delight. You'll gather his voice was still as vigorous as ever. Rosewenger in post-war Switzerland, making the Taubelit from Lehar's Land of Smiles sound almost too easy. A year later, he was singing in Vienna, just about the most impressive comeback any tenor could imagine. His partner there was a Russian soprano who was shortly to die at the tragically young age of 39, Maria Cebutari. I have a rare long player of them as the star-crossed lovers in Traviata, an interesting piece of casting because Alfredo should have been younger than Violetta, whereas Roswenger was 13 years older than Cebutari. Here they are at a party near the start of the opera, tuning their tonsils to the rollicking drinking song. <laughs> Oh, Freunde, so lieb. 
Lieber die ihm sollen siegen, den Kelch, der die Liebe uns spendet. Und die, die flüchtigen Stunden entfliegen, genießen kein Verlust. O trinken frisch was Leben von der Liebe glühenden Lieben, die Liebe ist uns aus ihnen in der Mitte aller Lust. Roswinger and Tributari and Verdi's Traviata. Helga Roswinger's voice was virtually unbreakable. I remember in the late 50s, by which time he was pushing 60, I chanced upon a German broadcast of Leon Cavallo's Pagliacci with Roswinger in the lead. The great aria, On With The Motley, in which the jealous clown makes up his face for a performance, despite his sorrow and anguish, rang out with all the power and authority of a man half his age. This aria will end our programme today, so this is Robin Gregory on behalf of my producer, Roger Bowman, saying, do join us again next week, when I shall have a very different programme for you, so make sure you have pencil and paper handy then. Sing by Helga Rosewenger. <laughs> Und schwingen 